Hello, and welcome to the first in our two-part video series on performing rights or PRS fees. In this video, we'll cover what PRS fees are and how to work out if you need to pay them. If you already know about PRS and just want to find out how or how much to pay, watch part two. So let's start with the basics. What are PRS fees? Whenever you perform a piece of music that is in copyright, whoever owns that copyright is due a royalty payment for that performance. PRS for Music is the main organisation that collects these royalties, or PRS fees. Instead of having to pay each copyright owner individually, you pay PRS for Music, who then redistribute the money to copyright owners. So now for the all-important question. Do you need to pay them? If you're organising a performance, it's your responsibility to find out if any PRS fees are due, and to pay them. If you're invited to play at a performance someone else is organising, the PRS is their responsibility. So, if you're the organiser, you need to find out if PRS fees are due. There are two things to consider. Is it a public performance? And is the music being performed in copyright? PRS fees are only due on public performances. That means things in the domestic circle or home life are exempt. You don't have to pay for singing in the shower. However, most of the activities our groups take part in would be classed as a public performance. That includes concerts, even if they're free, open rehearsals, come and sing or play days and performances in care homes, if relatives attend. If you're putting on a performance that is unusual and still aren't sure if it'll count as a public performance, you can find more examples and guidance on our website. The next question is, is the music in copyright? In the UK, a piece of music is in copyright for 70 years after the death of the composer. That's after the death of the composer, not after the piece was written. A common mistake. However, copyright doesn't just apply to composers. If a piece of music is arranged, translated or edited, then a new copyright is created, and that's owned by the arranger, translator or editor, and will last for 70 years after their death. You can normally find out who owns the copyright by looking on the sheet music. If you're not sure, it's best to contact the publisher, the Music Publishers Association or PRS for Music and they can tell you. When it comes to paying PRS fees, it works on a per concert, not a per piece basis. So all you need is for one piece of music to be in copyright for fees to be due on the whole concert. So to summarise, you need to pay PRS fees if you're doing the organising, it's a public performance, and any of the music being performed is in copyright. So now you know what PRS fees are and whether you need to pay them. You can find out how to pay in part two of our video series, or visit our website to find more helpful resources for running your group.